Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the second video in the MapKit for SwiftUI series. Before we carry on to introduce new features of MapKit, I want to set up a persistence layer with Swift data, and that'll be my my trips application that we're building, so that we can save our destinations and our markers to our phones, so that the next time we launch the app, they'll still be there. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. An application really isn't much use if it requires you to enter the same information each time you launch the app. What we need to do is add to our application is a way for us to be able to save the destinations that we want to visit along with all of the locations that you want to visit at that destination. So in our example that we worked on in the last episode, that would be the destination name, the center coordinate, and the region. And for individual locations to visit, we should have the name and coordinates of each of the sites so that we can reproduce the markers. Well, we're going to be doing that using Swift Data, the new persistence framework that was introduced at WWDC 23. Well, I have a complete playlist on this topic, so I'll not be going into it to that much detail, and the link is in the description. But I'd also highly recommend the Swift Data Mastery and Swift UI book by Mark Moykins of Big Mountain Studio. A link to this book is also in the description. You should know that this is an affiliate link, and I do receive a commission if you use that link to purchase. But you should also know that I would never recommend anything that I do not feel is absolutely worth it. And trust me, this book is the Bible on the topic. Well, if you're working along with me, you can continue on from the source code that you completed in that last video. However, if you're just jumping in here and you want to work along, you can download the completed project from that last video. The link's in the description. Just make sure you download it from the branch from video one. You can see I've already started a new branch now for this video and the completed source code for this video will be in that branch. Links to both branches are in the description. So let's keep our code organized in our project. So I'm going to create a new folder called Models. And within that folder, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call that file Destination. I'm going to need Swift Data and MapKit, so I'll need to import both of those frameworks. And then I can create a class called Destination. And since we're using Swift Data, I'm going to decorate it with the at model macro. Well, the destination is going to need a name. So I'm going to create a string property for that. So that when we create our destination, we can provide that name when we create it. Well, to create a region, we'll need to know its center, which is a CL location coordinate 2D, and a span, which is an MK coordinate span. And we learned that in the last video. Well, the problem is that neither of these types of objects can be stored directly in Swift data. However, these components are made up of simply just double values. Latitudes and longitude, latitude delta and longitude delta are just doubles. Well, the other issue that we're going to have is that when we create the destination in our app, we won't have our region yet. So we'll have to make these optional. And so those properties that we're creating now for those four different doubles will all be optional. Well, Swift data requires an initializer, so we'll let Xcode generate that for us. Super easy. Well, the region then can be created as a computed property of an optional type MK coordinate region. Remember, we won't have it when we first create our destination. Well, if we use an if let, if all of our properties are not optional, though, we can return an MK coordinate region providing a center and a span. So we use an if let. Well, the center is that CL location coordinate 2D. And then our latitude and longitude are simply the ones that we've passed in. And the span will be an MK coordinate span using that latitude delta and longitude delta. 
Now, if that if let fails, because we still haven't determined our latitude, longitude, and delta values, we'll simply return nil. Well, we need another class to create each one of our markers or place marks. So within that models folder, I'm going to create another file called MT placemark. Stands for my trip placemarks. And I'll import Swift data and map kit. Create a new class called MT placemarks as we did for our destination. And make sure you decorate it with the app model macro. Well, the markers need to know the name and coordinate. So like the destination, the coordinate is a CL location coordinate 2D that again, Swift data can't see. So we'll need to create it from the latitude and longitude. And there's one other thing that we'll be able to get when we search for our location on a map, and that's going to be its address. None of these will have to be optional as we get all of those when we will do our searches to create our new markers. So name is a string, as address is, but latitude and longitudes are double. And again, we'll let Xcode create the initializer for us. Now I'm going to come back to this class later and add some more computed properties as we need them here. But there's one more thing that we'll need to do to connect those two different classes together, and that's to establish a relationship. If our place marks are associated with a destination, meaning we've completed a search and we decided that we want to associate a particular place mark with one of our destinations, we can create a destination property here within our class and we'll call it destination and it'll be of type destination. However, when I'm at that location, I might just be searching for other locations, but only add some of them. So we'll have to make this an optional property. That sets up the relationship here as a one-to-one -one relationship with the destination if we want. But if we go back to our destinations class now, we can add another property here that will be an array of those empty place marks that when we initialize it, it will be an empty array. But when we delete the destination here though, we'll want to make sure that we delete all of the related place marks so that we can then decorate this with an at relationship macro and then specify that the delete rule as an argument is cascade. So now that we've set up our tables, we'll need to make sure that Xcode creates that model container. And all of this is covered in the Swift data series and in Mark's excellent book. So back at the starting point, the My Trips app, we'll need to complete the setup by adding a Swift data function to the window group. So first, we'll need to import Swift data. And then we can attach the model container function for destination type dot self to the window group. And since the destination has a relationship to the empty placemark data, we only need to specify the destination type here. That's all there is to setting up Swift data. So much easier than it was for core data. I really like using previews in Swift UI. So I want to have some samples to work with as we proceed so that I can build the UI and see what it's going to look like without having to run the simulator. And to make this easier, I'm going to use the same destination, Paris, and locations that I created markers for in our first video to create our sample mock data. So we're going to do this in a way that was demonstrated to me by Mark Moikens in his book. In the destinations file, I'm going to create a new extension on destination. And what we'll need to do is to create a container that is only stored in memory so that it does not persist within the preview. It gets created each time we go to a live preview. So we'll create a static computed property called preview that is of type model container. And now within there, we can create a container property, but we'll need to use a forced try because it could fail and create the model container for destination.self, just as we kind of did when we created our app at the app launch point. But we'll also specify a configuration, which is a simple model configuration where is stored in memory is set to true. 
So if we use this container in our previews, we're not persisting any data to the disk at all. So let me separate these arguments on to separate the lines using that control M. Well, we're going to be using this to update the UI. So it's going to have to be executed on the main thread. So I'll decorate this static property as a main actor. But we'll also have to make sure that we return that container when we created it. But before I return the container, we can create mock data and add it to this in-memory container. So first, the destination. And as I mentioned, I want to use the same coordinates and region that I used in my first video. So I'm going to return to that destination locations map view here, where I use that CL location coordinate 2D and the region and spans in our Swift data. So we can just copy those. And I'm going to paste those in and comment them out within my new destination model extension. First, we'll create the destination. So I'll need a destination object. But since I know all of the arguments, I can hold the option key down on my keyboard to get all of the optional double arguments as well. And then I'll separate them onto separate lines for ease of entry. The name is Paris. And then I can simply just copy and paste in the values that I just pasted from above as the comment. And then with Swift data, I can use the container's main context to insert this Paris model into the memory. Next, I want to create a number of markers, which will be constructed from empty place marks. So we'll need an array of place mark that we can then append to the array that's our Paris destinations place marks array. Well, I have almost everything I need for my sample Paris locations. The only thing that's missing is the name and the address. And you can make those up, or you can grab them from the gist that I'm going to show you shortly. So for example, for the Louvre, I could construct our place mark like this using the empty place mark initializer. And I can use Louvre Museum as the name. I discovered that the address is 93 Rue de Rivoli in 75001 Paris, France. And the latitude was that 48.861950 and the longitude the 2.336902. Well, I could continue on just like that for the remaining ones. That's a bit tedious. So you can go though to this gist and the link is in the description. And from here, you can simply copy that entire computed property right from this gist. And then simply return and replace that place marks array here with what you've just copied. Well, now that I have that, since it's an array, I can use a for each on the place marks array. And then it's going to provide me with a place marks iterator, which I can then append to the Paris place marks array. And now that that's all done, that container is going to return with the destination and its array. To finish up this video, then let's utilize this mock data in our destinations location map to display our MK place marks as markers on the map. So first, if we're going to be accessing our stored data, we'll need to import Swift data. And then I'm going to remove all markers and annotations from the maps view builder closure, the ones that we created in the last video. And then I'll remove the content of the on appear block and your map region should return to the region of your locale, the automatic camera position. Well, in order to get our single destination from what might be many, we'll need to perform a Swift data query. And we'll be changing how we arrive at this point in the next video, but this will allow us to test out our Swift data models as we've set them up. 
So we can use a Swift data query macro to fetch the array of all possible destinations that we might have in our stored database. We only have one, Paris, but eventually there could be many. But we'll want to get only one, so we'll have to create a state property here called destination, that is of type destination. But we'll have to make it optional because when we first build this app, there won't be any. And then in the on a peer block, we'll assign the first of the fetch destinations to the destination property. Now it's still going to be optional. So we'll need to use an if let for region to get that computed destinations region if it does exist. And then assign the camera position to that region for the destination. And yes, destination was optional, so we'll need to use that question mark. Well, the map still hasn't changed because we'll need to tell the preview that we want to use our mock data's container. So within the preview macro, we'll simply add the model container and then provide the actual container, which is that static property preview from destination. So your map should now be centered around Paris. So far, so good. For the map content, we'll need to create markers using each one of our place marks from our place marks array in our destination. But we'll need a CL location coordinate 2D for that, and our MK place mark doesn't have that. So let's return to the MT place mark class and create a computed property that'll construct that coordinate from our latitude and longitude. So it's a CL location coordinate 2D, and then we can simply just use the initializer providing the latitude and longitude. Back in the destinations location map view in the map content builder then, we can first check to see if we have a destination using an if let. If we do then, we can use a for each loop on that destination's place marks to provide us with a place mark iterator that we can use to create our markers. And that marker will just use the marker that is going to need a coordinate and a label. So for the coordinate, it's going to be that place mark coordinate. And then we can construct a label using the place mark name. And then for the system image, I'm just going to use a star. And then I'm going to apply a tint of yellow. Now, all of our markers that we have in our mark data are showing up in our region that's been specified as Paris. Well, that's all for this video, but we're well on our way now. In the next video, we'll learn how we can create new destinations or edit or delete ones and set the region for that specific destination. And that should ensure that our Swift data persistence layer is firmly established. After that, it's pretty much all MapKit. If you're enjoying this series, please give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And if this series is not yet completed, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you're notified when the new videos are available. Otherwise, continue on with the series by checking out the next one in the playlist.